England has fallen. As you might already know, Sir Ke Jong Un has been jailing people for posts on Facebook. I know that that seems more appropriate for a country like Russia or China, but no, this is happening in the United Kingdom. There have been several people that have been jailed for posts on Facebook criticizing illegal immigration. There are these other examples which I think aren't really being talked about nearly as much, which are really to, to do with expressing opinions or lying or pushing misinformation on the internet. So there's one case in Carlisle where a gentleman had um, essentially shared a series of racist memes. He's been given eight weeks in prison as a consequence of that. Um, there is, of course, the case of Bernadette Spoforth, who um, people might have been um, had already heard about this case where, because she is believed to be one of the people who was originally pushing the misinformation about the Southport killer um, being a Muslim asylum seeker, she was arrested and now bailed on this new kind of false communications offence that we have under the Online Safety Act. And there's actually been a case last week which has completely gone under the radar, which was a 25-year-old gentleman in Derby who has been now convicted of that false um, communications offence because he made a, basically a, a video on TikTok pretending to run away from a far-right mob. So he was just attention-seeking to about yes. 700 TikTok followers. He's been given about three months in prison. So I understand that a lot of the cases people are seeing are people you know, cheering on, if not encouraging, rioting. But there are some much more clear-cut cases of free speech being abridged, even if it is offensive, unpleasant speech, that no one seems to want to talk about. Well, the, the second example you gave there is an interesting one, because did she not say something like, if it is true, mm -hmm. then this is the identity of this person, this person is an asylum seeker, etc. Yeah. Um, when we get, and there was another case, wasn't there, of someone who's been in prison for putting uh, 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 something that, that struck me as an unpleasant thing to say with a, an emoji of yeah. a gun next to an emoji of an ethnic minority mm -hmm. person? Not a very horrible thing, I don't approve of that kind of thing, but got prison time mm -hmm. again. So we are dealing with existing laws being used, but uh, a disproportionate kind of uh, approach to actually lock people up for their free speech, aren't we? Absolutely, and I think in those cases that you just mentioned and in the cases that we've already been talking about, this is, not, this is a kind of clear-cut issue as far as free speech supporters are concerned. It doesn't matter how offensive these views are, it doesn't matter how spurious some of the claims are, you do not want the state to be involved in the business of defining and punishing what is hate, nor working out what is true and punishing people for pushing falsehoods. That takes you into very Orwellian territory. But yes. there's, there's a tremendous complacency about the laws that we already have, the way in which they're being used in the wake of the riots, and a lack of appreciation that things like this set precedents that will be used again. Yes. Um, and so whilst these might not be people who are particularly easy to defend in terms of what they're saying, you definitely do have to defend their rights for all of us. Not and then now, I might be going to jail for this video that I'm going to make right now. And I'm just going to put it easier for Sir Keir Jong Un. My postcode in the UK, I live in the UK, my postcode is NE16 See These Nuts. These nuts? Ha! <laughs> <Got> he! <laughs> And I'm not going to deny that some of those posts might have been, let's just put it lightly, stupid or ill-advised. Let's say that you shouldn't maybe post some of those stupid posts that some of those people maybe did. Let's give him credit. Let's say that some of those posts shouldn't be posted. That it's nowhere near enough reason to jail people for something they put up on social media. That is just insane. I'm gonna make it difficult for Sir Keir Jom Un to put me in jail. You know why? Because I am an immigrant. I wasn't born in this country, I'm not English. I was raised in this country, but I'm not English, I'm Spanish. No way! The government doesn't want you to talk about illegal immigration. They don't want you to see the problems that illegal immigration might have. The far-right thuggery. They don't want you to see that some cultures are not the same as others. And that just seems logical to you and me, that maybe Muslim culture has nothing to do with our culture. We don't treat women like cattle. We don't throw rocks at women if they cheat on us. And there's a big long list of etc. We don't resolve our problems with violence and a long, long, long list of etc. And there is a simple reason for that. It's because we have the heritage of Greek culture and Greek philosophy, Roman law and Roman citizenship 
and they don't. It's just as simple as that. While I'm not saying that some Muslim people might be wonderful people, they might be, and I'm sure there are, but their culture and our culture have nothing in common, absolutely nothing. So when you have millions upon millions upon millions of people from a culture that has nothing to do with yours, GP News can exclusively reveal that more than 20,000 migrants have crossed the English Channel illegally so far this year. The milestone was reached this morning as hundreds more made the journey in small boats from France. We could even say that they hate our culture. The inevitable reason is that all of those millions of people that have come here are not going to assimilate, are not going to integrate. And that's not racist. I'm sorry, that's not racist. I'm not criticizing them for the color of their skin or for their race. I'm criticizing them for their culture. I don't care about your race. I don't care about the color of your skin. I care about your culture. I care about your values. And if your values have nothing in common with mine, then I'm sorry, we're just not gonna get along together. And I repeat myself, if he wants to send me to jail for saying that, then be my guest. Come at me, bro. Come at me. I'm right here. I'm right on the move. Come at me, bro. I'm standing right here. Come at me, bro. I'm just stating a fact. If you're going to send me to jail for stating a fact that it's more your problem than mine, I don't care about what color you are. I care about your values. And that brings us along nicely to two-tier policing. Is, is it really true that we have two-tier policing right now in the UK? And I would say yes, and that is obvious to anyone who has eyes and who sees how they treat certain cultures when they do certain things and how they treat English people when they do certain things. But it's not my culture I'm talking about when I'm talking about two-tier policing. They don't treat Spanish people differently to English people. They don't drink... Th they don't drink... <laughs> They don't treat Italians differently. They don't treat Greeks differently. They don't treat Norwegians differently. We could go on and on. They don't treat, I don't know, French people. Well, <laughs> all right. But you know what I'm saying. It's always the same cultures that they have they're, they're, they have fear to detain them. They have fear to... They're, they're just afraid of certain cultures. I know what police are afraid. And I'm, I don't think this is... It has also to do top-down enforcing from the senior police officers telling them, telling the other police officers how they should act to certain cultures. But I think it also has to do with the street police officer that's just scared of being recorded, detaining a minority culture and just being blasted on social media for being a racist or an, or, or an Islamophobe or this or that, just because he was trying to de detain a person who committed a crime. Not only that, I think it's both ways. I think it's top down and I think some police officers are just afraid of going viral. Going back to the two-tier policing, we have two-tier policing. It's obvious the way they treat Muslim people and the way they treat white English people. Again, they don't treat Italians that way, they don't treat Spaniards that way, etc, etc. The most egregious and obvious of these examples was the Notting Hill Carnival and the way they treated that. This is what they said in the Notting Hill Carnival. Last hour, they've given us an update that they've made 38 arrests and recovered four knives. And they said a man believed to be in his 20s has been stabbed. His injuries are not life-threatening. But overall, it's been a really peaceful and enjoyable day. But overall, it's been a really peaceful and enjoyable day. This is what they say when English people are angry. The far-right thuggery we've seen this weekend, be in no doubt those that have participated in this violence will face the full force of the law. But overall, it's been a really peaceful and enjoyable day. Where when English people have valid reasons 
to be angry at the government. And I'm just not saying this government, the Tories have done it for decades. This is not a problem only of the Labour government. This is an issue that has started with Tony Blair and that has gone on and on and on. So are you racist? Should you go to jail for pointing out obvious problems that illegal immigration has? Should you be silenced for stating obvious facts? Like, for example, that the millions upon millions of men that have come here, military age, fighting age men. Sometimes I go down to Dover for the day, right? And I, I look out, right? I look, look for a boat and I see a dinghy with about 60 of them and I go over here like that, right? And I pull them in, I pull them into shore and I go, women and children first. They go, there are no women and children. Just you lads, is it? Just come on, lads. Come on, lads. Like, where are the women and children? If you're in a war-torn country, wouldn't, if I was in a war-torn country, I would want my wife and kids to flee. I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't run away from my wife and kids. So who are all these refugees that are all men of military age that come into this country? Now, if you point that out, you're a racist bigot and you're far right and should be put in jail. The far right thuggery. How this stating a fact now land you prison time. Now, that's what Sir Keir Jong Un wants. He doesn't want you to go against what he says. That's why now, if you post something on social media, like this video, you might be going to jail. Now, I don't give a damn. He can throw me in jail. That will only prove my point because he does, he's not doing this to people that have a massive following. There's YouTubers, TV presenters, and a long list of etc. who maybe portray this line of thought that I'm saying right now, that will not go to jail because the government knows that if they do that, they will cause a, a massive upheaval on the people. They're doing that to the little folk, to people like you and me, we don't have a massive following on social media. Nobody really is gonna go riot. Yeah, okay, that's the point. Nobody's gonna go riot if you and me go to jail. Now, if they start sending big YouTubers with big followings to jail, if they start sending TV presenters to jail, now that will cause a massive problem. What they basically want is for the little people like you and me to not say a word, to not go against the government. That's what they're really after when they're putting, you know, I think it was an NHS nurse, I'm not really sure, but they've put a few people in jail, just normal, middle-class, working-class people who, again, some of them might have made a mistake posting what they posted. I'm not denying that. If you post something, I think one of the posts was something like, someone should go burn a mosque or something like that. Okay, that, that's a stupid post. You shouldn't have posted that. But should you be sent to jail for saying something stupid on social media? Who hasn't said something stupid on social media? I certainly have, and I'm sure you certainly have. Everyone has done that. So should, be, sh should you be sent to jail for doing that? Absolutely no. In the Notting Hill Carnival, I'm going to put the stats somewhere around here. It was something crazy like 90 stabbings or 60 stabbings, three people critically critically injured, like 100 police officers were, were injured, and a long list of other things that happened in the Notting Hill Carnival. And while that gets treated like a mostly peaceful event... But overall, it's been a really peaceful and enjoyable day. They treat the white English working class riots as far right thuggery and they're all, you know, these people. We've allowed other people to come in. There are more churches closing in the UK now at the moment than there are public houses. They're becoming mosques. And becoming now, churches mosques. are closing and being becoming mosques. They need to turn around and go home. Yeah. We're Sorry, in. no. Not enough room at the inn. We uh, need to get our own people sorted first and then we can start opening the borders again. But now, until then, we need to Our national health service is crumbling. You know, these people, you know, are close to being Hitler. Hitler. Heil 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 Hitler. But then you get 
three almost fatal stabbings, 100 police officers, 50 ambulance workers, and that is mostly peaceful carnival. But overall, it's been a really peaceful and enjoyable day. It just makes no sense. It, like, this is turning to 1984 really, really quickly. George Orwell, it's turning in his grave. What the government is doing is basically ignoring some of the concerns that English people have. And I think that's really, really dangerous because this has not only to do with immigration. This is th the problem that the English people are facing. It's not only immigration. Immigration is a part of it, but it's a bit deeper than that. It's got to do with economic disparity that has been going on in this country when they started to close all the factories in the north of the UK and that created a lot of unemployment. This has been going on for many, many, many decades, even before illegal immigration became a real, real problem. But what often goes unnoticed is scenes like this. This is Jaywood, one of the poorest towns in the UK full of derelict houses and littered streets. All countries have regional differences. States in the American Deep South are poorer than those in New England. And in Germany, Bavaria is richer than the Brandenburg. But Britain is in a class of its own, and the gap between the richest and poorest parts is wider than any EU country. A generation and a half of high inequality poses risks not only to the UK's prosperity, but also to its social fabric and democracy. This persistent inequality has fueled feelings of discontent and frustration amongst many citizens who struggle to make ends meet despite working hard. As wages remain stagnant and the cost of living rises, some people more than ever have turned to blame migrants, seeing them as competitors for scarce resources and opportunities. These tensions have contributed to the sense of alienation and anger making the UK today feel more than ever like a tinderbox, ready to explode. Recent riots and unrest reflect deep-seated grievances that stem from economic disparities, showing how a problem like inequality, which many choose to ignore, undermines social cohesion and provokes unrest. And addressing these issues is crucial to ensuring a more equitable and stable Britain for everyone. So this has not only to do with immigration. This is a much deeper problem that the working class of the UK are feeling left behind by the government who are meant to help them and who are meant to at least give them an equal opportunity to move forward or move up in life. So this is much, much deeper than just immigration. The English people are tired. Unemployment is really bad especially amongst young people. A lot of jobs have been lost, especially on seaside towns or on towns that they used to have a lot of manufacturing that has been completely lost. So this is not only about immigration, this is about the English working class people being tired and fed up with government after government after government who keep leaving them behind who keep making promises and not fulfilling them. Now, I remember before Labour won the election that everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people were warning about how bad things were gonna get with Labour. But I just, I don't think anybody really was prepared for how really bad it was gonna get. I remember Constantine Kissin saying things like, all oh, things are gonna get really bad with Labour, it's just gonna get really, really bad. And people were thinking, along the lines of, you know, trans rights and, 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 and diversity, equity and inclusion, all of that going like through the roof and all of that going crazy, women losing more of their rights in sports. And th they were going along those lines, but nobody would ever thought that in like two months in power, people would be rioting in the streets saying enough of this Labour government. And they were only like one month or two months in power. He'd completely lost control of the UK in the summer. People warned about this. Some people warned about this. Things are gonna get really bad with Labour. Well, they got bad real fast. Now, when people, say that, oh, they've won the election and it was a landslide and they've got the majority of the votes. Really? If you actually see the proportion of the votes that Labour got, it's not even that big. If I'm not mistaken, it's like 
they had like one third of the votes because the way the UK system works with votes, they didn't get that many votes. So not that many people voted for the Labour government. So it's definitely a government that the majority of people we could say don't want or don't like. So I think that also had something to do with the riots. And I know I know what you're thinking and you're thinking, why are you not mentioning the, the stabbings of the little girls that happened? That was, you know, the, the drop that made the glass overfill. That was just the icing on top of the cake. We had the Muslim guys in, I think it was Manchester, assaulting the police and breaking the, the police officer's nose. It was a woman police officer and they broke her nose. And they were set free. And we had the, was it Leeds? I don't remember the place, but I think it was Leeds. The Leeds riot where they took away the child from a Romanian family and everything went berserk. And th there's a lot of Muslim um, and Romanian population there. And they all went berserk. They burnt police, they burnt buses, they burnt police cars. And the police were basically just running away, letting them do whatever they want to do. And they actually, I think it was like a like a like a PM from from there from Leeds actually said something really really stupid, like "Oh, we stand with the people" and and things like that. That was one thing. Then the Manchester attack happened, and then you had the stabbings happened, and then that was when the English people rioted. So it was like one thing after another after another. The, all the economics that I just explained, the English working class people feeling left behind. So the, the, the stabbings was just an icing on top of the cake and English people just had it. And they just went out in the street to at least show that they're not happy with the way the government it's running the country. And not just this government. Like I said, the Tories are also to blame. When you have the government treating everybody that's unhappy with the way things are. Every English person, every English white working class person that's unhappy with the way things are, as far right thugs, I think that it's just a massive mistake on the side of the government because all they're gonna do is make people hate them even more. If they see on the news that Muslim people riot, that Muslim people are with machetes on the street. Gangs chant at Al or Akbar. <laughs> Before targeting lone individuals. <laughs> Others physically attacked lone white people in Middlesbrough. <laughs> in Leeds, people wearing Union Jacks were set upon. But strangely, the media barely included any of this in their reporting. And in some cases, their reporters deleted the videos entirely. Sky News condemned an attack on a taxi, while conveniently failing to mention the tooled-up mob right behind them carrying machetes and blunt weapons. And, ...and look very pleased about it whilst they do it, did it. Then there was this, as I say, clash between protesters and the police, and that is when they then ran off across the park here um, a big group ran off um, looking for trouble, it looked like, to us. So we're just going to step away now from this group behind us. That you have police asking people to leave their weapons at the mosque. Actually, the police saying to a group of Muslims outside a mosque who were tooled up, please, you know, for the sake, we're here to protect you, please put your weapons back in the mosque. And there were scenes of 50 strong mobs with balaclavas shouting Allahu Akbar, pointing at the sky. There was one video of a man shouting, I'm going to your mother's, uh, and, and, and with weapons. Mm -hmm. It looked like, I don't know, it looked like a militia. And that, there's one thing about the yobs, and I'm not condoning it, I think I've made that very clear, very, very clear, that that appalls me. But that... The, the militia thing, it's, it's terrified. I felt scared. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the problem that, that we found it hard to articulate exactly what's going on because people feel so scared to, to speak on all sides in all kinds of ways because that's the kind of climate that we've had. And when you have that, 
that general sense of fear, what it then ends up doing is, is escalating and spilling out into the horrible scenes that we've seen. And but then when white English working class men go to a football match, they're detained as, as soon as they sneeze, then what you're gonna get is people being angrier and angrier against the government. And that's just a bomb waiting for a spark. Even Elon Musk has said things along those lines. And when Elon Musk speaks, he's way more intelligent than I am, so I tend to listen. Not everything and everyone is far right if they don't agree with Sir Kit Jong Un. You don't have to be a far right thug to not be in favor of millions upon millions of young men, young military age fighting men coming into the UK. You can be a normal, sensible person and still believe that millions of young men coming into this country illegally, not knowing where they come from, they throw their passports before they get to shore so, so the police doesn't know who they are. They could have done whatever in their own country. They could have killed someone and they can still get into our country. Well, not my country. They can still get into the UK. So no, not everything is far right. If you're concerned about illegal immigration, if you're concerned about integration and assimilation from the Muslim communities, which they will never integrate with our culture, I'm sorry. A small minority might be able to, but when you have the religion that they follow, basically saying to them that they have to hate every infidel, which is us. I don't see how assimilation and integration can be possible. That's just my opinion. If they want to send me to jail for that, if Sir Keir Jong Un wants to come into my house and send me to jail because of this video that I just made, then I invite him to do so. Come at me, bro. I'm standing right here. Come at me, bro. Put your hands up, bro. I just see things getting worse and worse by the hour. I really think the UK, it's turning into France. London is turning into Paris. Escape while you can. If you have the option to leave London, I would suggest you do. And these are dark times that we are living in. changing out there just like last time there's a storm coming Ari we'd all best be ready when she does <laughs> <laughs> 